Uh, let me leave and re enter. नमस्ते आप सभी का स्वागत है आज के इस सायंकालीन संस्करण में और आज हम बात करने वाले हैं फिर से बिग बीसी की यानी मतलब बी बी सी की कुछ लोग उसे बिग बी सी कह रहे हैं कुछ और भी बहुत सारी चीजें कह रहे हैं और बात करने के लिए हमारे साथ हैं विभूति झा और पंडित सतीश शर्मा पंडित सतीश शर्मा जी जो है वो वाकई बी बी सी को बिग बी सी की तरह ट्रीट कर रहे हैं बहुत दिनों से तो आइए हम दोनों लोगों से बातचीत करते हैं कि ये हो क्या रहा है नमस्ते स्वागत है आपका विभूति जी और पंडित जी मुझे लगता है कि थोड़ा उनका कनेक्शन सही नहीं था तो दोबारा तो अभी ज्वाइन करेंगे राइट right. तो ये जो हमारा बिग बीसी है ये क्या कर रहा है <laughs> जो कहते हैं कि वो गार्बेज गैस लाइटिंग कॉर्पोरेशन बन गई है वो यू नो ब्रिटिश का तो एक बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट चीज समझना है लोगों को कि वो ट्रांसफर ऑफ पावर करने के बाद से देश को भूले नहीं है भारत को भूले नहीं है वो वो डोमिनेट करना चाहते हैं भारत की संस्कृति भारत के हर एक हर एक हर एक पहलू को वो उस पर अटैक करना चाहते हैं तो मेरे हिसाब से यू you नो know, इसमें जो 20 साल पुराना केस उठा करके उन्होंने कुछ एक बताया है कि हमारे एम के रिपोर्ट के हिसाब से मोदी जी ने ये किया और वो किया तो ये सवाल है कि ये कहीं पे निशाना कहीं पे अंदाज किस किसके ऊपर कर रहे हैं तो मेरा ये विचार है कि ये जो है उन्होंने सीधा ऋषि सुनक पे प्रहार किया है और मोदी जी को दर्शाते हुए क्योंकि मोदी जी की कहानी जो है ये जो सारा जो किया है गोधरा वाला ये तो साबित हो चुका है कांग्रेस के पार्टी के अपने ही समय में उन्होंने जिस तरह से सिट का ऑर्गेनाइज किया था जिस तरह से सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने सब उनको क्लियर चिट दे दिया कि देर इज नो एविडेंस टू इनडाइट हिम उसके बाद अगर एम आई सिक्स सडनली अचानक एम आई सिक्स जो हो गया सत्य का यू नो हरिश्चंद्र बन गया है तो उसकी बातों पर पंच मक्कार जो आज नाचने लगे हैं ये शर्म की बात है लेकिन मुझे मेरा ये कहना है कि मेरा ये विचार है कि ऋषि सूनक ने बड़े गर्व से और बहुत आत्मीयता से उन्होंने टेन डाउनिंग स्ट्रीट में एंटर करने के पहले हिंदू संस्कार और हिंदू प्रथाओं का बिल्कुल अच्छी तरह से पालन किया दिया लगाया और उन्होंने बड़े गर्व से कहा कि हम अपने हिंदू ट्रेडिशन की बड़ी बड़े बड़े वो अपने सपोर्टर हैं यहाँ तक कि कुछ दिनों पहले मकर संक्रांति के समय में केले के पत्ते पर उन्होंने ब्रिटिश पार्लियामेंट और उनके लोग गेस्ट को खाना खिलाया ये तो जो है जो हिंदू के विरोधी हैं उनको तो बहुत 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 तरह से जले होंगे वो कि ऐसा ना हो कि लंदन का मेयर जो है वो बहुत ही अच्छी तरह से सुपर सीड हो जाए एक हिंदू प्राइम मिनिस्टर की वजह से तो जब सबको अपना अपना डर लगता है तो वो कुछ नजर लगाते हैं तो वो जो है ऋषि सुनक को कुंठित करना चाहते हैं कि वो अपने हिंदुत्व पे ज्यादा और हिंदुइज्म के बारे में वो ज्यादा जोर शोर ना करें तो निशाना जो है ऋषि सुनक हैं मोदी अभी जो है मोदी जी का जो केस तो सेटल हो चुका है नो बडी गिवस अ डैम अबाउट इट टू यूज द अमेरिकन स्लैंग वो चिल्लाते रहे जो भी चिल्लाएंगे लेकिन कानूनी तौर से मोदी जी बड़े हो चुके हैं और उनको ये निशाना जो है ऋषि सुनक को है कि वो अपने जो है जिस तरह से वो उठे हैं हिंदू बन करके उस संस्कार को दबाया जाए आप भी जानते हैं हम भी जानते हैं कि ये दो में जो इलेक्शन होने हैं वो यूके में भी होगा इंडिया में भी होगा और अमेरिका में भी होगा तो पंच मक्कार और लेली गैंग अभी बिचल, बिल्कुल विचलित हैं दे दे विल डू एज द अमेरिकन फ्रेज गोज वट एवर इट टेक्स टू डिस्टेबलाइज हमारे देश की डेमोक्रेटिक ट्रेडिशंस को तो ये जो है मेरे हिसाब से उन्होंने ऋषि सुनक को साधा है बिल्कुल इस तरह से ओके okay. पंडित oh. जी 
यू एंड द बीबीसी राम जी नमस्कार जी जय श्री राम नमस्कार जय श्री राम यू एंड बीबीसी गो लॉन्ग वे बैक so what is this latest ah <laughs> uh, sanjay ji it's uh, one day i'm going to write a book and it will be something like war and peace um firstly we have had many communications with the bbc the last time i had a communication at high level i emphasized to them that being a hindu we do not like to be part of a problem we like to be part of a solution and there is a problem and so let's have a forum where we can have this conversation and maybe we can help contribute something to improve your product make it more attractive to the audience and make sure you don't fall into these problems again so they convened a meeting of the heads of all the departments um i attended and a a dear friend and supporter of ours um swami ambikanand saraswati ji she can she sort of uh, accompanied me and we were on this conversation for the best part of an hour and a half we presented evidence we presented facts we presented opinions uh, history everything and then after 3 weeks i got a letter which basically said we deny everything right we are whiter <laughs> than white right? we are whiter than white um and i say that uh, deliberately um we are within our guidelines we present a balanced approach the um circumstances that you have addressed addressed to us we disagree with and then there was one point which was absolutely undefeatable and they responded well we make editorial decisions uh, on 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 the basis of uh, our own um, circumstances and requirements now can you imagine a broadcaster basically tiptoeing around every issue and refusing to engage with you now you mentioned i have a long relationship with them if i were to summarize who it is who sits on the other side of the the table when you have these conversation it's sort of a combination between um hannibal lecter and um captain mannering from dad's army so you have the sublimely well meaning but completely incompetent coupled with the sublimely ill meaning and very competent and it varies from one to the other the upshot of it is that the bbc have their own agenda they have their own culture they have they are like a a mini cult in and of themselves and they will try their best to gaslight anybody to fit into what it is that they're wanting to pursue and this has got an awful lot worse i was thinking when did this really accelerate and there are two things that struck me one is that things really deteriorated with the bbc um in 2014 and that's a date that's very coincidental for all of us but in the last year it has got so bad it has got very very vicious as we saw with lester as we have now seen with this ridiculous um thing masquerading as a documentary and it struck me that what's happened is that after her majesty passed away you know britain it's a tragedy it britain has become a country which is almost at war with itself it's as though her majesty had a big basket and she kept all of the kittens inside this basket and now that the basket has gone they are running amok we have seen the divide and rule that was used to conquer so much of the world suddenly turn inwards here in this country now in the conservative party the government you're seeing infighting in labor there's infighting there is a Uh, an unwritten war going on between the bureaucracy in whitehall and the government um there is a war going on between all of the individual pillars of state the bbc is not a friend to the conservative government no, not by any means and having said that it's not a friend to the british people either and so we are in a, an incredibly volatile chaotic situation here and i think what um, what we are going to see more of is that chaos the bbc will seek to export now because there's very little left to export from the united kingdom to other parts of the world uh, well uh, pariji in the past you have also carried out demonstrations against the bbc isn't it ji and that was the first time really that hindus got together to take the issue to the doorstep of the bbc 
And I have a, a response from them, and it's exactly the same response. This is from the head of their editorial department, the policy makers and so mm. on. And uh, he's written a lengthy letter, but the, the upshot of it is very simply that um, we don't believe we were in the right, in the wrong. Um, you know, I'm sorry, our opinion is uh, perfectly valid and we're happy to continue on that basis. And it is overbearingly condescending. You know, when a person says, you have hurt our community, and the community responds with such a public um, response, it, it, it really is worthwhile paying attention and accommodating the lived experience of that group who are saying that this has been done to them. And for the BBC to brush it off uh, completely offhandedly is just so supremacist and colonialist, it's uh, mind boggling that it still goes on. That was the first, and I said so at the time, that was the first of protests that are going to happen. In fact, at the end of 2022, I tweeted out that 2023 will be the year of Satyagraha. And I think we are going to see Satyagraha on a global basis. And with the BBC, I'm already hearing of large numbers of people cancelling license altogether. I'm hearing that uh, there are going to be further protests. In fact, there's one that uh, a small group of friends are very keen to pursue, and that is to gather as many licenses as they can along with their license holders, to attend the BBC's head offices, as we did last time, and shred the licenses in front of them. So our community is now beginning to awaken to the fact that there are many ways of challenging narrative. And the BBC, I think, if, if one thing will persuade it, apart from the loss of revenue, is that its narrative and its credibility at creating narrative will be so undermined. The BBC, as uh, an institution which is openly anti-Hindu, which is um, systemically and strategically anti-India, the largest democratic nation on the earth, governed by a, a government which has twice had the largest democratic mandates, and yet the BBC is saying, no, no, we are not happy with this. This cannot be allowed to persist. The BBC, I think, is really in, in, a, in a very difficult situation. We have to educate it, and we'll continue to do so. विभूति जी जैसा कि पंडित जी कह रहे हैं कि बीबीसी अभी भी एक इंपीरियलिस्ट माइंडसेट में है आप क्या सोचते हैं ओ बिल्कुल सही है बिल्कुल सही है क्योंकि वो इंपीरियल वो कहते हैं कि लेपर्ड जो है ना अपने स्पॉट नहीं बदलता तो इनकी जो इंपीरियल ड्रीम थी जो यू नो इंपीरियल कॉलोनियल ड्रीम जो थी जिन्होंने जो जो कि उन्होंने बचा के रखा अंदर द नेम ऑफ ट्रांसफर ऑफ पावर Uh, 1947 में तो वो भूले नहीं है अभी तक इंडिया तो इंडिया तो भारत तो उनके जुअल इन द क्राउन था ही तो कौन कौन इस बात को पसंद करेगा कि अपने जुअल को हार जाए तो वो भूले नहीं है और हमारे यहाँ जो है जो हम लोग अच्छी इतनी अच्छी तरह से जयपुर डायलॉग कहते हैं पंच मखार मकौले चिल्ड्रन एंड ऑल दैट वो सब के सब जो है अभी भी टू यूज द बॉम्बे हिंदी चाटू है वो <laughs> तो अभी जो है वो वो इनसे उतरेगा नहीं ये जो है इनमें जो है ये नो सोचिए इस बात को कि थैंक्स टू टेक्नोलॉजी टेक्नोलॉजी और साइंस के कारण आज हम बहुत सी चीजें तत्पर जान जाते हैं तो उनके जैसे कि वो है ना लॉर्ड रामी रेंजर ने चिट्ठी लिखी वो सारा का सारा सब सबके सामने है जिसमें उन्होंने खास तौर से अपने लास्ट पैराग्राफ में ये इस बात की चर्चा की है कि हम तो इंडिया के साथ फ्री ट्रेड अग्रीमेंट करने वाले हैं इन सब चीजों से वो उस पर असर होगा उसका किसको नुकसान होगा ब्रिटेन को होगा उसके बाद आप दूसरी तरफ देखिए कि आप लॉर्ड सिंह हैं विंबलडन के उन्होंने छोड़ दिया बीबीसी को क्योंकि गुरु तेग बहादुर की बात को उन्होंने दबाया क्योंकि एक खास समुदाय को यू नो के दिल पर चोट न लगे तो ये इस तरह की जो हरकतें हैं अब नंगी हो, हो जा रही हैं और उसके कारण जो है यू नो सच्चाई सामने आ जाती है और सत्य में जयते और जैसे पंडित जी ने कहा कि अब जो है वो नकार नहीं सकते आप तो एक और भी मुद्दा है इसमें कि अगर बीबी अगर ब्रिटेन ईयू से बाहर निकलता है तो वो अपने देश के लिए अपने देशवासियों के लिए करता है लेकिन अगर इंडिया ने अपने अपने आर्थिक अवस्था को अपने पोलिटिकल रीजन से कुछ काम किया तो इंडिया गलत कर रहा है तो ये दोहरी दोगलापन जो है अब वो नंगा हो रहा है साहब और थैंक्स टू हम जैसे चैनल हैं हम इस बात की को बखानते भी हैं और कहते भी हैं बड़े ताल ठोक के कहते हैं कि ये जो है 
गार्बेज भारत विरोधी कॉरपोरेशन और गार्बेज गैस लाइटिंग कॉरपोरेशन जो है अब जो है लोग कहने लगे हैं तो इस बात को जो है अब ब्रिटेन छुपा नहीं सकती है साहब नो एवरीबडी नोज कि सच्चाई क्या है अब और एक बात और भी है हर इंसान अभी आज की यह तारीख में अगर आप देखेंगे तो यू नो समझने लगा है कि ब्यूरोक्रेसी जुडिशरी मीडिया किस तरह से हम पे आप पे प्रहार कर रही है और वो भी चुन चुन के एक व्यक्ति विशेष पे प्रहार करते हैं नूपुर शर्मा अभी भी जान के लिए बच, बच के छुपी हुई है लेकिन वो जो है ठेकेदार ऑफ वो कहते हैं फैक्ट चेक वो अभी सड़क पे दादागिरी कर रहा है तो अब जो है लोगों को इस बात को इस बात को इसे बात से बहुत नफरत होने लगी है और इसका असर होगा 2024 का जो इलेक्शन है वो बहुत ही इम्पोर्टेंट है और ये जो है पूरी जो पूरी जो तैयारी चल रही है कि ये तीनों देशों में अमेरिका यूके और इंडिया में जो इलेक्शन होगा आई कॉल देम द थ्री मोस्ट प्रोमिनेंट डेमोक्रेसीज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड यहाँ पे अगर उनका अगर वो, वो उन्होंने अपसेट किया तो आप समझिए कि राइट विंग और हम जो हमारा जो अप्रोच है उसको पर बहुत असर पड़ेगा इस पर सो इट इज इट इज लेफ्ट लिबरल बीजेपी जुडिशरी जिस तरह से लेफ्टिस्ट थिंकिंग आ गई है प्रशासन में इसकी लड़ाई है उनको 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 अपने आप को बचाने के लिए सब कुछ करना पड़ेगा और हम जो है हमें उस बात के लिए लड़ना पड़ेगा पुरुषार्थ और परमार्थ और दिखाना पड़ेगा पराक्रम दिखाना पड़ेगा इस बात दर्शकों से अनुरोध है कि आप कृपया लाइक का बटन दबा दें और आपसे ये भी अनुरोध है कि आप अपना प्रश्न पूछ सकते हैं व्हाट्सएप के माध्यम से भी पूछ सकते हैं और आप सुपर चैट के माध्यम से भी पूछ सकते हैं विभूति जी वॉइस ऑफ अमेरिका ने भी एक डॉक्यूमेंट्री बनाई है और वो उन्होंने बनाई है ऑल्ट न्यूज पे और वो भी कल रिलीज हुई है मैंने पता है उन्होंने जुबैर की प्रशंसा में डॉक्यूमेंट्री बनाई है देखिए मैंने वो देखी नहीं है मैं जरूर देखूंगा बिकॉज वो कहते हैं कि आजकल जो है एक 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 बयान निकल गया है कि विक्टिम इज द मोस्ट सुप्रीम थिंग इन द वर्ल्ड विक्टिम हुड और इसको हमें एक्सपोज करना पड़ेगा बिल्कुल अच्छी तरह से तो आई विल सी दिस एंड वी विल डेफिनेटली डू सम शो ऑन दैट वॉइस ऑफ अमेरिका को थोड़ी छोड़ेंगे फिर वो हमारी आवाज नहीं है वो हमारे अमेरिकन वॉइस नहीं है वो किसी और की वॉइस है <laughs> <laughs> वो वॉल्डरमर्ट की वॉइस है टू यूज दी अमेरिकन स्टोरी वो वॉल्डरमर्ट की वॉइस है और उससे हमें अपने आप को बचाना पड़ेगा वी विल फाइट अबाउट दैट डेफिनेटली लेट 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 मी गो बैक टू पंडित जी पंडित जी व्हाट डू यू से टू दिस इंक्रीजिंगली लाउड प्रोपोजिशन दैट सेज दैट इट इज नॉट रियली मोदी दैट इज द टारगेट एज फार एज द बीबीसी इज कंसर्न it is actually the hindu community in general and rishi sunak in particular yes to its targeting and undermining rishi sunak yes it's targeting the hindu community notice that the bbc's cynical broadcasting immediately creates a conflict between hindus and muslims there's no sensitivity in in their broadcast straight away it goes in with the voice of a hindu extremist right and yet when it reports on the pakistani grooming gangs in the united kingdom they are asians and they are still asians and they will be forever asians so there is a a design here so it is wanting to create um a lack of respect and appreciation for rishi sunak for hindus but in a greater sense for bharat as a, a resurging emerging nation you know i was in um, bharat as you know uh, we had the pleasure of spending time together but i also traveled to uh, karnataka and to up and a few other states and one of the things i noticed is that many states are seeking and now saying that our target is to be a 1 trillion dollar economy so one state is targeting to become a trillion dollar economy we have many states the notion of a hindu majority 10 trillion dollar economy it scares the west 
we have a young Hindu population, one of the most dynamic demographics in the world, and they are now beginning to reconnect with their ancestral identity. On that journey to discover their ancestral identity, they're going to encounter one simple fact, and that is that there was a time when we were Soniki Chidya, and the world came to Bharat claiming that they wanted to do trade, that we want an exchange of goods and services and friendship and culture and everything else, when the reality was totally different. When I was traveling, as I was traveling in Bharat, I met many entrepreneurs who I think, uh, I met a few who are the heads of unicorns, and I was watching them and listening to them, and I was thinking, these are the Rajas of the modern age. And what was happening is they're being groomed by the new colonialists who are coming over with exactly the same sales pitch. They're coming over with that spiel. We want to invest in Bharat's dynamic um, arc of expansion and growth for the next uh, decade. And it's no different. The leopard, um, uh, Vibhutiji mentioned the leopard and its spots. When I was watching these conversations, uh, a Punjabi expression came to my mind. We, we say, Kutte di pooch that you know <laughs> no matter what happens <laughs> you know you struggle to straighten it it will not straighten because that is in its nature and this is definitely what i'm seeing bharat is being groomed we are seeing neo colonialists uh, arriving um harvard wants to come in and establish campuses and the government is at this moment considering welcoming them um oxford wants to come in and do the same so there are a lot of people who are on the one hand from the West saying, we love you, we want to work with you, we want to be a part of your success story. And the other side of the coin is that there are deeply rooted, established institutions who do not want to see a strong Bharat. And the difficulty that we're going to face is identifying which is which. I was listening to a World Trade Organization head of Africa making a speech the other day at the World Economic Forum. And she was saying, this is a problem we have. How do we identify our real friends? So the Indian situation, I think, and the African situation are actually quite similar in terms of recovering um, First Nations um, who are very, very wary of what's called the First World. And on the other hand, we are in that situation where we want to influence the world. We want to embrace the world but in a manner which doesn't destroy us. The last time we did this, we paid the price for over 250 years. And so my recommendation and suggestion to everybody is that Bharat should decide what its national borders are in terms of its intellectual property, in terms of its civilizational wealth, in terms of its emotional boundaries, and in terms of its physical resources, and that I include the people. And it should eject from within those boundaries entities and agencies which are hostile to a healthy Sanatani Bharat. And I would, I, I think I would love to see the time now when that um, hashtag which became so popular, um, Congress Mukta Bharat becomes BBC Mukta Bharat. You know, we want to see the BBC either civilized and become a general partner in the well-being of uh, Bharat, or it should be removed. And for those people who are going to scream freedom of speech, freedom of speech, I would remind everybody that each nation has an obligation to maintain the freedom of speech of its own citizens, not external news agencies. We've seen how America has responded to the Chinese media companies. We've seen how Britain and Europe have responded to, the, to RT, the Russian media company. They de determined straight away that their interests were actually being harmed by the presence of these agencies. I've just seen a letter um, from our Honorable um, Ganchan Guptaji, the uh, Minister for Information and Broadcasting. Uh, advisor, uh, advisor to the Minister. Of advisor, to, advisor to the Ministry, where he's advised that uh, I think 303 eminent personalities from every sphere of life in, in Bharat have objected to this um, broadcast. With that sort of backing, why not? <laughs> that Let's includes say, me, by the way. I noticed the name. I was looking through thinking, oh, my goodness, here's another <laughs> wonderful person. I spotted that, uh, Sanjayji. But, you know, these are the grounds, and I think it's perfectly valid, whereby an entity like the BBC 
their license to broadcast in Bharat should be suspended for a period of time. Only then will they, will they, um, shall we say, realize that the, the ground has changed. It's overdue and we should encourage that. Uh, so hashtag BBC Mukta Bharat. Hashtag BBC Mukt Bharat. Vibhuti ji, kaisa lag raha hai ye aapko? Aur ye bhi batayein ki Bharat sarkar jo hai is mamle mein bahut hi kamzor rahi hai. Aapko dhyan hoga ek baar Al Jazeera ko inhone ban kiya tha aur do char din ke baad hi reinstate kar diya tha. Ek baar NDTV ko ban kiya tha to kuch ghanto mein hi reinstate kar diya tha. तो क्या इसमें इतनी हिम्मत कभी आएगी क्योंकि इस बार डायरेक्ट मोदी जी के ऊपर अटैक हुआ है और इंफॉर्मेशन ब्रॉडकास्टिंग मिनिस्ट्री ने यूट्यूब और ट्विटर पर से सारे लिंक्स जो है उनको हटाने का आदेश भी दे दिया तो बीबीसी को ही क्यों ना समाप्त कर दिया जाए क्योंकि बीबीसी की जो हिंदी सर्विस भी है ना यहां पर वो एक्चुअली हिंदी सर्विस नहीं है वो उर्दू वुड की तरह उर्दू सर्विस है वो लिखा भी उसको देवनागरी में बिल्कुल उर्दू की तरह लिखा जाता है और एक समुदाय विशेष से ही वो पूरी तरह से अच्छा देत भी है तो बीबीसी मुक्त भारत मुझे लगता है अच्छा आइडिया है आप क्या सोचते हैं मैं तो इस प्रस्ताव का पूर्ण रूपेन समर्थन करता हूं वो कहते हैं कि यू नो कभी-कभी हमें एक्शन लेना जरूरी होता है जो एक्शन जो है अभी समय आ गया है वो कहते हैं देखती ही न दर्पण रहो प्राण तुम प्यार का ये मुहूर्त निकल जाएगा होता है तो आज हमारे सामने ये सवाल उत्पन्न हुआ है कि हमें करना क्या है जो मैं आपके साथ चर्चा में हमेशा कहता हूं कि knowing what we know what must we do that is the stage we are at now हम उस समय पे उस उस बाउंड्री पे पहुंच गए हैं कि अब जो है हमें दिखाना पड़ेगा एक्शन अब चर्चाएं बहुत हो गई विचार विमर्श विश्लेषण विमोचन और विख्यान बहुत हो गया अब हमें करना क्या है इस बात का निर्णय करना पड़ेगा और आप जो सही कह रहे हैं कि भारत सरकार में यह दम होगा कि नहीं होगा यह देखेगी वो कहते हैं मैं तो आज मूड में हूं गाने के मूड में आओ देखे जरा कितना है दम वो वाली अवस्था आ गई है तो अगर आप मोदी जी ने और मोदी जी के सरकार और ब्यूरोक्रेसी ने दम दिखाया और जैसे 300 लोगों में आप भी एक आपने भी दस्तखत दिए हैं अपने अगर उनको कहा कि बीबीसी को बैन करो एक एक समय आता है कि आपको जो है ये एक स्टेप लेना पड़ेगा सात दिन बंद करो देखो क्या होता है यू नो जैसे मैंने कहा हुआ है लोगों को यहां पे कि अगर चाइना ने सात दिन एक्सपोर्ट बंद करने एक्सपोर्ट बंद कर दिया यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स को तो हमारी शेल्फ्स खाली हो जाएंगी तो इसीलिए इस बात को समझना पड़ेगा कि भय कहां से आ रहा है और हमें जो है भय बिन हो एन प्रीति वाली दिखानी पड़ेगी बात ये सच्चाई है इस बात को हमें कहते हैं कि ब्यूरोक्रेसी में आपका बड़ा अच्छा शब्द है प्रोग्राम को कार्यान्वित किया जाए तो अभी जो है कार्यान्वित करना पड़ेगा भारत सरकार को भारतीयों को सबों को मिल करके कि अब और नहीं बस और नहीं गम के प्याले और नहीं बहुत प्रहार हो गया अब जो है अब अब जो है हमें आपको दिखाना पड़ेगा चश्मा आईना दिखाना पड़ेगा और यू नो आईना दिखाना पड़ेगा और जो भी है एक धर्म युद्ध का समय आ गया है अब पीछे नहीं हटना है तैयारी करनी है पराक्रम दिखाना है हम पलायनवाद पे नहीं रहेंगे इस बात को हमें समझ के आगे बढ़ना है देश के देशवासियों को व्यक्तिगत रूप से सामूहिक रूप से और संस्थान की तरफ से इन तीनों चीजों को इकट्ठे करके अब लड़ना है ये अब दिस इज द फाइनल वॉर एंड इट हैज टू बी फॉट इट कांट बी आप दुश्मन आपका गला काटने आ रहा है आप उसको लस्सी गुलाब जामुन और शैंपेन पिलाएंगे तो वो पी करके खा करके फिर गला काटेगा आपका तो so, इस बात को अगर हम नहीं समझेंगे तो नुकसान अपना ही होगा ये तो आपने वो सूफियों वाली बात कह दी कि भाई सूफियों और नॉर्मल जो मुल्ला मौलाना है उनमें फर्क कितना होता है कि एक डायरेक्ट गला काटते हैं ये गाना गा के कवाली गा के फिर गला काटते हैं लेट्स गो बैक टू पंडित जी पंडित जी यू हैव अ जी 
if I can just uh, pick up on one thing, one very important thing that Vibhuti ji said, and I didn't want to forget okay, it. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, if, if, I, if I may, I'm sorry for interrupting you. Sure, sure, and sure. this is very, very important. And the Americans, Vibhuti ji's um, fellow countrymen, they have a saying that it's better to ask for forgiveness after the event than to apologize. Uh, sorry, it's better to apologize and ask for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. So if you do it wrong, you can ban the BBC, then it will be good. If you ask for forgiveness, if you have a lot of trouble or a difficulty, we can do this. This is not a problem. The, the second thing is, please, this is not an attack on Prime Minister Modi. This is a regime change strategy to create conflict between Muslims and Hindus in Bharat. This is how serious and how simply it should be viewed. And that simplicity in that statement is something that should be presented to the BBC, to Geeta Pandeji, who runs the, uh, the desk there in uh, New Delhi. And she should be asked to deny that charge and to disprove that charge. She would not be able to do so. And that would be grounds enough. And as uh, Vibhutiji was saying, it's, um, it's long overdue. And uh, now that he has pressed the... The um, golden oldies button, you know, sub kuch luta ke hosh mein aaye to kya kiya, din mein agar chirag jilaye to kya kiya. It is time to respond to these. And Vibhuti ji, on that note, I hand it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> before that, before that, I, 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 I was actually going to ask you about the uh, run-in that you had with the BBC at the time of Leicester. What exactly were they doing at the time of the Leicester situation? Weren't they doing pretty much the same thing, gaslighting the Hindus? So the BBC is actually very skillful. Firstly, it will always quote other people. Okay, When it chooses to make a contentious statement, it will look for somebody who it can then platform. And so it can say, well, no, no, it wasn't us. We were quoting somebody else. And so if you look at that strategy, when it's applied to these sorts of situations such as Leicester, that's exactly what the BBC did. If you try and put evidence towards them, let's say the Hindu community, I'll give you a very real example. We gave the BBC evidence of grooming gangs, Pakistani Muslim grooming gangs targeting Hindu and Sikh girls. We gave them names, we gave them cases. We were even willing to put them in touch with members of the family, including the victims themselves. And the BBC decided that the evidence wasn't robust enough. There wasn't enough uh -huh. of it. We gave them many cases and they said there wasn't quite enough to present this. Whereas in Leicester, what they did is they picked up the opinions expressed by the extremists, by terrorism supporters, by ISIS supporters, by people who have been to Syria during the conflict and given support there and things like that and platformed them. And that way, they managed to say, oh, there are lots of Hindu Tawadi BJP extremists who are attacking the Muslim community. Now, they did this and they weren't expecting the backlash. It was just wonderful to see that so many members of the Hindu community and the wider Indian community, and in fact, the British community joined in as well, who said, where's the evidence? And the volume of media activity which came from Bharat, from Jaipur Dialogues, from other um, Indic wing um, nationalist uh, patriotic channels, the volume was such that the BBC were required to reconsider their initial reporting. And so they rushed off another team to Leicester to try and find out what the evidence was. And if you notice, their second report blamed it on social media. They didn't apologize. <laughs> right? They didn't they apologize. Do. The British they, they, never apologize to India. They never do. Opinion. They never do. And the, the surprising thing is they think nobody notices. You know, everybody who read that article, the second article, which said um, the manner in which social media was used to inflame hatred and violence on the streets of Leicester. Right? They were actually part of it. They were the greatest proliferators of the social media nonsense that had been created by extremist voices from the Islamist community. And this is what the BBC does. And as I say, my conversations with them were lengthy. They were factual. We provided evidence. And we presented evidence on their doorstep directly to them. But the, uh, the letter itself that came back is a wonderful English colonialist bureaucratic um, 
speech, you know, straight out of Orwell's 1984. You know, lots and lots of, <laughs> lots and lots of Bushpitam Vachim, I believe is the expression, but uh, a complete denial of responsibility. And I'm afraid they're not going to get away with it. You know, the, the other thing that's happened is the BBC is no longer seen to be a friend of the indigenous British community either. They have been accepted, it's been accepted now that the BBC plays its own game and it's not serving the interests of the man on the street. So it's becoming increasingly isolated and this is a good development. Well, can we say that the BBC is again uh, something like uh, one uh, hoary institution here in India itself is of the elites, by the elites and for the elites? The word elite has a certain degree of respectability about it and a certain degree of um, positivity about it. And I think that's not the right word, to be honest. Um, one, one word that springs to my mind is, is very harsh, but I think is relevant, and that is slave masters. You know, slave masters always ensure that the slaves pay for their own slavery. And the British are now beginning to feel we pay a license to the BBC and what does the BBC do? It gaslights us all the time. You know, it doesn't support us. It hides the fact that our daughters are being abused on the streets of so many towns up and down the country. You know, what purpose does it serve? And we are paying for our own mental enslavement. And so this is the perception of the BBC here in the United Kingdom. And you have to also realize that the BBC, its principal role is the, the storyteller to the world, isn't it? Its main narrative has been that we are a, a credible storyteller. We are a credible news broadcaster. And yet its own narrative about itself is just not, it's a fiction, right? And this fiction is dissipating in front of our eyes. We are seeing that in fact, the BBC, the most successful BBC propaganda campaign was to actually tell the world and the whole world that it was on their side, that it was looking after their interests, that you know it could be entrusted to present the truth fairly and without fear nor favor. Whereas what's been revealed is an organization which has tragically engaged in regime change propaganda and is doing so right now in the 21st century. So I'm sorry, the, the facade of the BBC being a reliable source, it's disappeared. And this is worth recognizing, Sanjay. You, you mentioned there in Bharat, right? One thing I noticed is that this residual reputation that the BBC is a credible source, that is an immensely powerful tool which seems to have been leveraged by the anti-India forces on the left and our friends in the um, Congress Mukta Bharat Brigade. They have actually found that their own voice had been muted, had become untrustworthy over the last two, three, four, five years. They had no mechanism. NDTV's role has been uh, exposed. But imagine with the brand of the BBC claiming that Prime Minister Modiji is responsible for Hindu-Muslim conflict. That is a wonderful piece of ammunition, isn't it? And I saw yesterday that certain Twitter handles were picking this up and amplifying it and getting a million hits straight away. So that seems to suggest to me that the BBC knew exactly what it was doing. It was creating little bits of uh, incendiary ammunition for parties on the ground in Bharat to start to use to target the, incum the incumbent uh, government. And I hope people realize that the BBC's ammunition is not 24 karat gold. It's uh, fool's gold and not to be trusted. Right, right. Bhavati ji, as you are saying that this regime change operation can be killed. And they have picked up in 2002. That they can create more divisions again. But I think that if they have done this, they are a great man. Because in 2002, कोई यदि ये ऊपर ले जाएंगे और उसको बढ़ा चढ़ा के दिखाएंगे तो इससे मोदी जी का कोई नुकसान तो नहीं होने वाला पूरी तरह सहमत हूं साहब उनका कोई भी नुकसान नहीं होगा उनको एक्चुअली मोदी जी को फायदा ही होगा मेरे विचार से क्योंकि 
जनता जनार्दन भारत में जानती है इस बात को कि हर तरह से दुश्मन जो हैं हिंदू के दुश्मन जो हैं वो हिंदुत्व को बर्बाद करने पे लगे हुए हैं उन्होंने अपना सर पे कफन बांध के युद्ध में उतरे हुए हैं अब हमें उतरना है भगवा लगा के इस बात को मानना पड़ेगा कि बाहर की जो ताकतें हैं उनमें एक ही एक मुद्दा है जो कि इंडिया को डिवाइड किया जाए वो टू क्रिएट इंडिया हिंदू मुस्लिम डिवाइड ये तो ब्रिटिश की डॉक्यूमेंट्स में पार्टीशन ऑफ इंडिया की डॉक्यूमेंट में लिखा हुआ है कि कि इतना अविश्वास डाल दो दोनों धर्मों में कि वो कभी इकट्ठा हो ही नहीं सके तो मेरा जो हिंदी में मैं कहता हूं कि अंग्रेजों ने हमारी तब भी ली अब भी ले रहे हैं वो लेते रहेंगे और हम देते रहेंगे ये जो मूर्खता है हिंदुओं और मुसलमानों की इंडिया में इस बात को समझना पड़ेगा कि वो हमारे शुभेच्छु नहीं है उनके ऊपर उनके उनकी इच्छा है हमें डोमिनेट और कंट्रोल करें तो दोनों तरफ से लोगों को यह जागना पड़ेगा कि ये जो है हमारे विध्वंसक हैं और जब आपको अपने शत्रु का शत्रु बोध हो जाता है जब पूर्व पक्ष कीजिए स्वयं का पक्ष कीजिए स्वयं को स्वयं को समझिए तो शत्रु बोध भी होगा इस नैरेटिव को जैसे पंडित जी कह रहे थे कि बीबीसी का जो नैरेटिव है कि हम जो है रिलायबल सोर्स ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन है न्यूयॉर्क टाइम्स में अगर लिखा है तो वो ब्रह्म 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 शब्द से भी ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट है वॉशिंगटन पोस्ट में लिखा है बीबीसी ने कहा अरे भैया बीबीसी कौन है हम सब जानते हैं कि ये नैरेटिव बिल्डिंग होती है बीबीसी इज बिग बीसी ऐसा बोल रहे लोग यस तो माय पॉइंट इज वेरी सिंपल कि जब दुश्मन आपका खेल आपसे अच्छा कर रहा है डेमोक्रेसी के नाम पर तो आपको अपने खेल को इंप्रूव करना पड़ेगा मैं तो ये कहता हूं कि जब यहाँ पे यूएस में जब म्यूनिसिपैलिटीज जब रेजोल्यूशन पास कर रहे थे इंडिया में 370 और सी के खिलाफ में मैं कह रहा था कि कडप्पा म्यूनिसिपैलिटी झुमरी तलैया म्यूनिसिपैलिटी वो लोग क्यों नहीं ऐसा रेजोल्यूशन पास करते हैं कि अमेरिका में इतनी बर्ताव हो रहे माइनॉरिटीज के खिलाफ वेर इज द रेजोल्यूशन अगेंस्ट पाकिस्तान माइनॉरिटीज बींग हर्ट वेर इज द रेजोल्यूशन अगेंस्ट द ब्रिटिश डुप्लिसिटी इन ट्राइंग टू हर्थ इंडिया इन सब चीजों पे हमें भी सकर में अपने को सकार में करना पड़ेगा हमें वेर इज द इंडियन रिपोर्ट ऑन एट्रोसिटीज ऑन हिंदू ऑन लेस्टर इन 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 यूके कहा हुआ भला कि लोग कहते हैं कि हिंदुओं की क्या पिटाई की हमने लेस्टर में वो न्यूज बनता है लेकिन हमारी सफरिंग को न्यूज नहीं बनाते हैं लोग तो एक जो है कि हमें भी अपने को कहते हैं कि कमर तान के आगे बढ़ना होगा स्टेप लेना होगा और आप ओवर नाइट उठ करके लड़ाई नहीं कर सकते हैं वो कहते हैं कि हादसे हमेशा होते हैं आज ज्यादा पता चला पता चलने लगा है आज हम ज्यादा जानते हैं फिर आई विल गो बैक टू माई फेवरेट फ्रेज नोइंग वट वी नो वट आर वी डूइंग बियॉन्ड विचार विमर्श विश्लेषण विमोचन एंड विज्ञान ये चीज हमें सोचना पड़ेगा कि इस चीज को हम कैसे लड़ें इस बात को क्योंकि अभी जो है वो कहते हैं कि चार साल पहले मैंने एक शो किया था कि आर हिंदू फेसिंग एन एग्जिस्टेंशियल थ्रेट it is we are and if we don't arise awaken and assert we are done and act then we are done it is time for action now bahut ho gaya awareness bahut aa rahi hai which is very true wo bahut achhi baat hai hum hum awareness create kar rahe hain pandit ji wahan kar rahe hain aap aap aur hum yahan kar rahe hain logon ko jankari ho rahi hai lekin aage kya baithe baithe ki sarkar karegi wo nahi hoga vyaktigat roop se सामूहिक रूप से और और इंस्टीट्यूशनल रूप से हमें इन चीजों को झेलना पड़ेगा और इसके ऊपर लड़ना पड़ेगा दैट इज सिंपल प्रेस्क्रिप्शन नाउ मैं तो यही कहूंगा ओके पंडित जी ओके बिफोर आई गो टू यू वन मोर रिक्वेस्ट ऑल द व्यूअर्स कृपया आप लोग हमारी चैनल को सपोर्ट करें सपोर्ट करने के लिए जो नीचे आप देख रहे हैं उन डिस्क्रिप्शन में आप जाकर जी पे पेटीएम यू इत्यादि के माध्यम से आप हमें सपोर्ट कर सकते हैं साथ में आप कृपया सब्सक्राइब भी करें चैनल को और आप बेल आइकॉन भी दबा लें पंडित जी इज एन बी बी सी स्टेट फंडेड एजेंसी एंड इफ दैट इज द केस व्हाट इज इट्स अकाउंटेबिलिटी टू द ब्रिटिश पार्लियामेंट so it is a an entity which is funded by the public purse 
every British um, citizen who watches live television is required to pay a license fee. It's called a license fee, it's just another tax. You know, there was a time in this country when they used to tax you on the number of windows that your house had. And if you walk around some of the old mansions in London, you will see many of them with walls where the windows were bricked up. So it's just another way of collecting a tax so that the population can be um, conditioned to receive messages that the, uh, the state and the establishment want them to receive. There is a tussle going on right now between the government, the Conservative government, and the British broadcaster. In the past, the BBC has had a great deal of support from the Labour side of things, the left-leaning ecosystem, but even they are beginning to struggle with some of the um, issues that the BBC is now causing. The British government want to introduce an online um, censorship bill, basically, and that's also part of the mix. At, at the moment, there are people who want to sort out the BBC and prevent it from broadcasting the sort of nonsense that we've witnessed, but they don't want overall for there to be a gagging order or anything which limits free speech. So there's a great deal of turmoil at the moment in deciding what has to be done. One thing that will definitely shift the whole conversation, though, is the involvement of the general public. It's the involvement of the general public which gives governments and legislators the mandate to go ahead and make the changes that are necessary. And the day that we get um, youth organizations, Yuva organizations, let's say hypothetically, we get 10,000 members of the ABVP or Yuva National or um, HSS, RSS, uh, VHP, all doing some sort of dharna outside of the BBC's headquarters in Delhi, that will go viral around the world. And all of a sudden, perhaps we will see here in the United Kingdom, the directors and the people who are in charge of editorial policy scratching their head and then thinking, hang on, we have to change. This is the way in which this change will occur. And uh, as uh, Vibhutiji was saying, you know, the public knows more now than it ever has. In fact, um, Rajesh Kannaji has just wh whispered in my ear, ye to public hai, ye sab hai public hai. Now I'm showing how old my age is from the, the people who will have seen that movie from way back in the, the 60s, I think. But the, the activation of our public mandate is vital even on this issue. We're trying to do our bit over here, and there will be an increasingly loud voice of the public challenging the BBC, challenging its role as the as the state broadcaster and uh, also challenging its funding. So Ndidi, I wouldn't be surprised if between now and let's say August the 15th, we see a very large number of our Hindu community just cancelling their licenses and getting news from alternate sources such as Twitter. And, uh, you know, we, we get much better news and um, broader news and more reliable news from social media sources now. And so there's no need to have access to the BBC's live broadcasting. And the day we get 100,000 households cancelling their licence fee, that's what, 100,000 times by £157, which is a massive hole in anybody's budget. And that day, I think, is, is drawing closer. So once the public withdraw their support for the public broadcaster, the public broadcaster then has to change. And I think that's the only way we're going to make it happen. Okay, Vibhuti ji, your concluding word, and please continue because uh, I just need to go and get the charger to my laptop. So you please can uh, continue uh, till I come back with the charger. Okay, everybody needs to be charged up, so you know, <laughs> we need to charge up, and uh, from time to time, my my submission is very simple. Uh, you know, Shatru both ko dhyan mein rakhte hue. हमें अपने आप से इस बात को मानना पड़ेगा पंडित जी कि एक्शन का समय आ गया है साहब एक्शन का समय आ गया है एंड यू नो यू नो टू टू पुट इट माइल्डली अब टाइम नहीं है इफ वी इफ वी मिस द बस नाउ वी विल बी फॉरएवर इन बुलाकात टेक्नोलॉजी इज विथ अस इट अलाउज अस द लिबर्टी टू कनेक्ट द वे वी आर डूइंग टुडे this was not possible 20 years ago but now it is possible to connect to reach the messages and the public leadership also has to recognize that frustration is coming in people 
it happens only in democracy. The people who treat you as a hero can treat you like a villain tomorrow. And that's what is important for everybody to realize that the time has come. You can't hide anymore. Nobody can hide anymore. That is the biggest advantage of technology. You know, whether it is Hunter Biden, whether it is, you know, you know, for example, just say Chacha Karte, documentary Banti, BBC in a documentary Banai as if it is where Satya Vachan Hogya. India make only documentary Banri Yeki Hamare, it is Hare. Churchill ne ye kiya, wo kiya, British ne ye kiya, wo kiya. Where are the documentaries from India? That's important. Hum apne liye hi aur apne aap ko bachane ke liye hi kuch nahi karte hain. Aur hum depend karte hain ki western nation bole. Japan ne aisa kiya, bhai hum kya kar rahe hain? And I'll give a very simple example. This happened just about the 26-11 ke time pe India mein. I was in India talking to a CEO, chairman of a company, uh, of a major company. And he asked me, Vibhuti, can you bring the best practices from various parts of the world that we can introduce in our company towards industrial relations and personal policies? And I said, which one will suit you? Bank of Mongolia, Bank of uh, you know, San Francisco, or Bank of England? You know, why not develop a practice of our own culture, of our own tradition, and our own values, and our own charcha? Jab tak hum wo na karenge, apne values ko agar hum undermine karenge, to kaun phir madad karega humari? Ye jo hai ki log kya kahenge, jo the desire to seek validity, endorsement, approval from others, ki log kya kahenge, we have to completely do a brainwash of ourselves. And I'm being very aggressive about it. We have to rewire our brains once again to be able to attend to these challenges as they are emerging. If we do not, we will be again wasting our time. And that's what is important, my last word on this matter. Thank you. Uh, quite right. And uh, time to go to the audience questions. And uh, let me start with the first one. Aditya Saini. Mm. And thank you very much, Aditya. A lot of support from you. Thank you. Love you, Sanjay ji and team. Govind, bless you all. Dhanivad. Thank you, Aditya ji. Appreciate it. Thank you. Abhilash Panda. <laughs> the Bernal Broadcasting Channel fears <laughs> the steep growth of economy with simultaneous growth of Sanatani legacy. The combination uh, fears, actually West fears the combination. That's what it is. Combination says. frightens West, I think. Uh, yeah, frightens the West. But it is uh, to, just to add to that, uh, is there a lot of uh, Bernal required because uh, India has replaced Britain as the fifth largest economy? Oh, you know, this is one of those situations where we stand at a, a crossroads in history. Okay, On the one hand, we have an aggressor. We have a violent thief who has furnished his home with stolen goods and will not admit that he himself has been incapable of creating wealth and creating goods. And that the only thing that they've achieved is theft. Then the BBC was created as the agency to hide that process. All right, the BBC's principal function was to gaslight the world so that they would succumb to colonialism. And then in 47 and thereabouts, when colonialism overtly finished, was to con continue to conceal what had happened in colonial times. And now what's happened is that Bharat is rising and it's saying, well, we want to relate with you, but before we can move forward, we need to have a few things reconciled. You know, a strong Bharat is going to say, we want a good relationship, but let's deal with the past first. Return to us everything that was stolen in terms of our manuscripts, our Dev, Devi Devtas, Vigrahas, Murthis, and everything else. You know, allow us access to our heritage. And each of these is a step which will undermine the feeling that the West has of its own superiority. But it has to happen. The European powers who came to India, and remember, it wasn't just the British East India Company, there was the Dutch East India Company as well, who did horrific things. The Portuguese, we know, were absolute barbarians. Each and every one of them is actually fearful of having to confront 
their past. And so, yes, this is going to be a time when we have to be firm. We have to be very mature. We have to be the higher moral ground, the older brother civilization, which is bringing this uh, whole uh, disjointed, imbalanced West into line. It's not going to be easy, Sanjiri. But we have dharma on our side. We have the right on our side. And hopefully, we're not going to be made complete idiots of. Uh, our leadership, and I talk about the Rajas, the um, business oligarchs and the tycoons, that they are not going to succumb to being gaslit by snake snake oil salespersons as we were the first time around. Interesting times. Hmm. <coughs> Next one. Hakim Ji Kare, Namaskar. Urdu se kya issue hai aapka? Urdu se hamara kya issue hoga? Unto bas yehi kare kabhi. तवायफों की जो भाषा है उसको आप कोठे पर रखो मंदिर में मत लाओ इतना सा इशू एंड थैंक यू हकीम जी नेक्स्ट मैमुना बेगम हलाला दैट्स अ नाइस नेम नमस्ते संजय जी यू सेड इट परफेक्टली देयर आर मेनी फॉरेन चैनल्स यू आर डूइंग एंटी हिंदू नैरेटिव्स इन नॉन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेजेस well that's the answer to hakeem ji actually mamuna <laughs> pe kamas given the right answer next again mamuna begum halala all the foreign media and our left media do is to create confusion among people in india who are not very informed about the truth they are doing it in local languages now tamil malayalam bengali it's very important that the BBC's access to the wider community in multiple languages is uh, temporarily suspended, if not permanently. Right. Yeah, that's, that's one of the points that you are pursuing, Pandeji, and we are absolutely in agreement with that. BBC Mukth Bharat in all of the indigenous languages, please. Absolutely. Next. Again, <laughs> Mamuna Begum Malala once again. Sanjay Ji, one more thing. This BMGF and other foreign agencies are gathering our qualitative data in the name of social service for some time now. We fools work for them and we dig our own grave. Yes, an important point. Yavuti Ji, you have this experience? Yes. You know, I... Can't agree more. I love the name of Maimuna Begum Halala, so I totally agree with that, what she says. But there is one good thing about this, and that's, I think, worth emphasizing as well. And that is that this whole understanding of um, being able to distinguish between friends and enemies is evolving. And there's no point in having that understanding, but not having the means to act upon it. And so sometimes I think that the um, BJP government has possibly got its uh, ducks in a row in that it's acquired a huge amount of capital. The country does have more wealth being produced than ever before. What we desperately need now is a sense of reciprocity and even hypocrisy detection. So that when somebody comes to Bharat like Harvard and says, we want to establish an educational institution in your land, we look at the manner in which they have influenced their own society. And when we see statistics such as the, 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 the highest number of mental illness cases that the world has ever known exist in the United States. One in a quarter children are growing up in single parent families in poverty in the United States. Then we can respond to them and say, well, your home is not as nice as you paint it to be. So thank you very much. But we do not want your services to refurbish our home. And we need to develop this level of Shatrubhod so that we don't get taken in. Well, they've just, captured, just to, just to add to they've that, captured the head of our judicial system. And just to add to <laughs> that, word. the U.S. May, children in schools are going to get two days off if they're experiencing mental stress. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sanjayji yeah. and uh, especially Vibhutiji, I think sometimes that Garvapasi for Sanatanis is going to be not only... Um, optional but an imperative and when the Hindu community 
and the Indian community generally decides that it needs to go back home because it's become so toxic in outside countries. इनका कुछ नहीं बचेगा ये ऐसा गिरेंगे कि कभी खड़े नहीं हो पाएंगे सर वो घर वापसी के पहले एक हमें एक और भी इंस्टीट्यूशनल लेवल पे कंटेस्ट करना पड़ेगा करना पड़ेगा इस बात को एंड दैट इज बोथ इमोशनल साइकोलॉजिकल एंड स्पिरिचुअल दैट कन्वर्जन इज अ सिन अगेंस्ट गॉड्स ओरिजिनल इंटेंट ये नैरेटिव हमें बतानी पड़ेगी व्हिच गॉड एग्जैक्टली द पॉइंट एग्जैक्टली द पॉइंट या Satish could have been Sam, Vibhuti could have been Valhalla, or Sanjay Dikshit could have been Saifuddin, but we are not. We are born in part of a process. Who is anybody to say that my way or highway is the only way to move forward? Why can't we Sorry. replace the word tolerance and replace it with acceptance and respect for each one as we are? Anyway, that's the larger debate. I think yes, we, we need, need to engage that. in that yes. uh, some other time. Yes. Uh, let's go to the next question for the time being. Mr. Pradeep Reddy saying, Pranam, I heard that more than 2 lakh UK women are unable to pay rent instead of paying in sex. Is this true? If I'm mistaken, please let me know. Gee, I too have heard that phenomenon. In fact, it was reported on the BBC of all places. <laughs> So, <laughs> so I'm not quite sure whether to believe it or not, but I certainly have a question mark over the validity of two luck. Their statistics tend to be shakable. Yeah, okay, next is Mamuna Bega Malala once again. I think this name needs to be awarded. Uh, Satish ji, do you see a connection between Islamic fundamentalists and media houses? in terms of funding narratives and war against the east the west and islam are two sides of the same coin what a wonderful question and the simple answer is uh, of course they're connected they, they they have roots whereby they're ideological cousins and both branches of the family ideological families behind the euro christian civilization and the islamic civilization they have been established on slavery bharat is a civilization which was established on freedom and how can bharat be allowed to exist and challenge the uh, hegemony of um, civilizations based upon slavery so they're natural allies it's just that once they do <laughs> they haven't thought this through but if they do ever become successful in trying to diminish our capacity to influence in a beneficial way the world they will fight amongst themselves and Cain and Abel will be <laughs> revisited on the earth and everybody will suffer so we have to prevent this but you're right we have to recognize that the coin has two sides and in fact the coin is a um kotta sikka i believe is the word i'm trying to i'm trying to think of a song now so i could pass it back to vibhuti ji on the in terms of a forged currency and demonetization but <laughs> we'll leave it at that okay next one cricket fan mohan bhagwat attacking hindu scriptures for lgbtq well i don't think that is the topic today so i think i'll pass it uh, next is uh, hakim ji Kimji is asking, what Muslims in India do to be more inclusive? Vibhuti ji? Yeah, it is, uh, you know, what, what they have to do is just respect and accept everyone as they are, instead of trying to impose your will on others. And one of the things which I always request people, you know, change happens if you try to make a change. don't try to tell me to accept you as you are if you can't drop the word kafir from your language and that kafir's throat needs to be cut unless he becomes a muslim so there is a need to be awakening happening on the islamic side as well because this this awakening and awareness doesn't if it doesn't happen acceptance and respect doesn't happen for me being a murti puja believing in murti puja i have i have said this on this show and many times before if you believe allah is supreme i am very happy for you please 
go ahead and be with your Supreme. Leave me with my Krishna, Shiva, and Ram as I please. Don't tell me I'm wrong. That is the issue. If you can do that, Hakimji, if you can persuade your followers or your believers to respect me as I am, I think life will become better. It's very easy. The question is not to impose your will on anyone for that matter. Thank you. With that, we come to the end of the question hour. And uh, I think that is also the time to bring up the curtain. Thank you very much. आप सभी लोगों को महानुभावों को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आज का शो देखने के लिए और वंस अगेन रिमाइंडिंग कि कृपया आप सब्सक्राइब करें आप शेयर करें आप लाइक करें और आप हमें सहयोग करें बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद पंडित जी को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद विभूति जी को भी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद जय हिंद वंदे मातरम जय श्री राम एंड बीबीसी मुक्त भारत की जय हो बीबीसी मुक्त भारत चाहिए हमें बिल्कुल एक्शन 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 एक्ट थैंक यू जय श्री राम बैंड भी तो चल रहा है ठीक साहब सब